All right, we're back for the final installment. We're gonna cram everything into the final video here. The multicolored, the artifacts, the lands, all of it, all right? <music> Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles, and welcome to the final video on Dominaria cards. We are going to go through the multicolored cards, the colorless artifact, and land cards now. We're gonna hit them all. So let's start with the gold cards. We got Adele. Adele is the Cinder Wind. <laughs> Three mana for a 2-2 two -two Flying Haste. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, wizards you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Well, that's fun. You got a fucking wizard lord, looks like a Samite cleric. That's kind of cool. Alright, Arvad the Cursed. I descended from Crobax, I assume. Five, five mana, 3-3, three, three, Death Touch, Lifelink. Other legendary creatures you control get plus two, plus two. Right on. Very cool. I won't abandon the weatherlight. My destiny is to serve a joyous side. Ugh. God damn it. This illness means I must trust my faith more than myself less. Of course, of course, the new the new narrative is all men must serve women. Women are the most important thing on Magic fucking on Magic's representation radar. So of course his destiny is to serve at Joyra's side. Get fucked. If they didn't do this shit all the time, it wouldn't annoy me so much. You know, a bit here or there, whatever, but their agenda's so fucking blatant. Ariel, Knight of Wind Grace, four mana, four four vigilance, white and two tap. Get a 2-2 two, two, uh, Knight token, and that is Vigilance. Black, and tap her and X untap Knight tokens you control. Destroy target creature with power X or less. I love the artwork on this. Riding a big black fucking panther is ballin'. I love the fucking, the flavor in terms of getting a bunch of knights and you can destroy anything with them. That's cool. Daragaz reincarnated. Say what now? Seven mana for a 7-7. Seven, seven. He is black, green, and red. Flying trample haste. If he would die, instead exile it with three egg counters on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, if he's exiled with an egg counter on it, remove an egg counter from it. Then if he has no egg counters on it, return him to the battlefield. You don't even cast him. He goes straight back onto the battlefield. Wow. He's awesome. Very cool. Is that what's supposed to represent on that one saga? I don't know. Garn of the Blood Flame. Five mana for a 3-3. Three, three. When it enters the battlefield, return to your hand all creature cards in your graveyard that were put there from anywhere this turn. Other creatures you control have haste. This feels like it'll be used in some kind of weird combo and not as the actual creature. Grand Warlord Radha. Five mana for a 3-4 haste. Whenever one or more creatures you control attack, add that much mana in any combination of red and or green. Until end of turn, you don't lose this mana as step and phases end. Alright, this one is, uh, I've heard, this is another one that people go, ah, oh, look what they did to her, it's social justice, whatever. It's like, nah dude, she was a fucking strong female sexy warrior before. And she's still like, basically, she's just fucking older. So she got a little thicker. But she doesn't, like, it doesn't look, she, I don't know, whatever, man. This this one doesn't strike me as the hardcore social justice warrior shit that I've been hearing from people. But whatever, let's move on. Halar the Fire Fletcher. Three mana for a 3-3 three, three trample. Whenever you cast a spell, if it was kicked, put a plus one, plus one counter on him. Then he deals damage equals the number of plus one, plus one counters on him to each opponent. Weird, but interesting. Joyra! I like the altar dart with giant jug. <laughs> Whenever you cast a historic spell, draw a card. I fucking hate this historic concept. It's so stupid. Joda, Archmage Eternal. Let's see here. Four, one blue, one red, one white, one colorless. Flying. Uh, you can pay up every color rather than paying the mana cost for spells that you cast. So it works like a Fist of Suns. A, a four, three flying Fist of Suns. I like that. That's cube worthy. Muldrotha, the Gravetide, 6 mana for a 6-6. Six, six. During each of your turns, you may play up to one permanent card of each permanent type from your graveyard. Wow! What? Wow, and this is the Child of Maltani? That's cool. I like that. Oath of Teferi. No, Teferi. No. No! 5 mana. Oh my god. When it has a battlefield, exile another target permanent you control. Return it to battlefield under its owner's you may activate the loyalty abilities of Planeswalkers you control twice each time rather than only once. For the lost and forgotten, I will keep watch. Fuck your gate watch. It's stupid and it's lame and it keeps going on and it makes you lazy and your stories are fucking shitty. Fuck the gate watch. Primeval's Glorious Rebirth. Seven mana. Return all legendary permanent cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's cool. Wrath Capuchin. Ship's Mage. I'm so fucking confused because I thought that Wrath and Shauna are like brother and sister. But Shauna's like brown. And Raph's like white. What the fuck is going on? There's something I'm not getting. 
Four mana, three, three, flying flash. You may cast historic spells as though they had flash. Oh, that makes sense. Raph Capuchin can summon up ancient sagas of history at instant speed. Historic is such a stupid fucking keyword. All right. Rona. Oh, my God, Rona. You look fucking ridiculous. Representation. Three mana, two, two. When it enters the battlefield, you may exile target historic card from your graveyard. You may cast non-land cards exiled with Rona. Exile the top card of your library. I can exile a saga from the graveyard. Did you know that I can remove the Brothers War from existence and bring it back? What? Shanna Sissé's Legacy. Can't be the target of abilities your opponents control. That's interesting. Not spells. Just abilities. She gets plus one, plus one for each creature you control. So it's a one-one by itself. Ugh. I am heir to many treasures. None is as precious as knowing how my ancestor lived her life. Ooh. Slimefoot the Stowaway. Three mana for a legendary fungus. Whenever he die, whenever a sapling you control dies, he deals one damage to each opponent and you gain a life. Ooh. Wow. I like that. That's cool. As Joya restored the weatherlight, a mushroom growing in its hold unexpectedly became her first crew member. Ha! <laughs> That's cool. Tatyova, Benthic Druid. Five mana, three, three. Whenever land enters a battlefield under your control, you gain one life and draw a card. Oh, fuck yeah. That's... That's great! God damn! Dude, I'm glad they made that uncommon. That card's really good. Teferi, Hero, hero of Dominaria. <laughs> draw a card at the beginning... For plus one, draw a card at the beginning of the next end step. Untap two lands. Ooh! Ooh, that's nice. Minus three. Put target non-land permanent into its owner's library third from the top. All right. Minus eight. You get an emblem with whenever you draw a card, exile target permanent opponent. Wow. Oh, wow. Teferi, you're sick, dude. You're awesome. Tiana, ship's caretaker. Oh, she's an angel? God damn it. I thought an angel was standing behind her. That's weird. Okay. Five mana, three, three, flying first strike, angel artificer. Whenever an aura or equipment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may return that card to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. Cool. The idea of an angel artificer that mends artifacts is really neat. All right, now we've got the, from the, uh, the Planeswalker deck. Teferi Timebender, six mana, uh, plus two, untap up to one artifact or creature. Minus three, gain two life and draw two cards. Minus nine, take an extra turn after this one. Ooh, I like that. He's not too powerful, but I like him. Uh, Nyambi, Faithful Healer. When Nyambi, Faithful Healer, enters the battlefield, you may search your library and or graveyard for a card named Teferi Timebender. Reveal it and put it into your hand. If you do search a, if you do search your library this way, shuffle it. Interesting. My father will be happy to see you. Oh, that's his daughter? Cool. That's Teferi's daughter and she summons him up? Well done. Fire Song and Sunspeaker. This is the buy a box promo. That you can only get from buying a box. Which is a weird thing to do, wizards. Six mana, four, six. It gives your red instants and sorcery spells lifelink. And whenever you cast a white instant or sorcery spell, you get to do three damage to a target. So it's pretty interesting. But, um, I don't, I don't like that they made it to the buy box. You can't get it otherwise. All right, so colorless. We got Karn, Scion of Urza. Four casting cost, Planeswalker. Plus one, reveal the top two cards of your library. An opponent chooses one of them. Put that into your hand and exile the other with a silver counter on it. Minus one, put a card you own with a silver counter on it from exile into your hand. Minus two, create a zero zero colorless construct artifact creature token with this creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact you control. So there's no ultimate. He has no ultimate that he builds to. You just put him out and just keep using him. Well, that's interesting. It's an interesting way of, huh. It's a way of printing an earlier version of Karn, almost. Like, this is Karn before he became as powerful as he will be in the future. That's interesting. Let's move on to the artifacts. Ace Third Glider. Three mana for a 2-1 flyer that can't block. Oh, wow, this is actually straight-up reprint from Alliances. Amaranthine Wall. Four mana for a 0-6. Two mana to give it indestructible. All right. Dak and Blackblades. Blackblade Reforged. That's very cool. Two mana... Equip creature gets plus one plus one for each land you control. Equips a legendary creature for three. Equips a regular creature for seven. If I sound a little different, I'm sorry, guys. I'm starting to feel a little ill. I'm just trying to push through it. Uh, Blood Tallow Candle, one mana, six and tap it. Sacrifice it. Target creature gets minus five, minus five until turn. 
Well, that card's trash. Um, Damping Sphere. This card, two mana. If a land is tapped for two or more mana, it produces colorless instead of any other type and amount. And each spell a player casts costs one more to cast for each other spell this player has cast this turn. Wow, this is an amazing answer to Storm decks and big mana lands. Four Bearer's Blade. Oh, this is one of those nice, like, uh, kind of stained glass -y ones, but only with a little bit on it. Three mana. Equip creature gets plus three, plus zero. Has Vigilance and Trample. Whenever the creature dies, you can give this blade to another creature. That's cool. Gilded Lotus is back. Five mana. Taps for three mana of any color. That's cool. I like seeing that back. That's a nice way to nod to the past and the Lotus. Guardians of Koilos. Five mana for a four, four. When it enters the battlefield, you may return another historic permanent you control to its owner's hand. Looks like it's got a fucking stun gun, which is kind of dumb. Doesn't feel like magic. Robotech, whatever. Helm of the Host, four mana artifact. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of equipped creature, except the token isn't legendary if equipped creature is legendary. That token gains haste. Neat. Howling Golem, three mana for a 2-3. Whenever it attacks or blocks, each player draws a card. So that's a, that's a calling out to the original Howling Mine. It works the same way in everybody getting to draw a card. Icy Manipulator, four mana... Uh, one tap an artifact creature or land. Now this card was in the original, original game, like Alpha. This was printed in the original, and they reprinted in Ice Age, got rid of it for a while, brought it back in like 8th or ninth edition, and now it's back yet again. I, I wish they'd used the original artwork. I really liked that fucking like mirrored sphere. Joy is familiar. Four mana for a 2-2 two -two flyer. Historic spells you cost, cast one last to cast. Oh, okay, because a metal owl can make history cost less. Fuck off. Jousting Lance, two mana. A cool creature gets plus two plus zero. As long as it's your turn, a creature has first strike. All right, interesting. Oh, Juggernaut's back with a. Eh, I don't like the artwork. Juggernaut's a form casting cost. Uh, has to attack every turn if able. It's five three. Can't be blocked by walls. It was a huge deal back in the day. A second turn Juggernaut off of a uh, Sol Ring or a Dark Ritual was a real big problem unless you had a Bolt or Plow. Mishra's Self Replicator, five casting cost, two two. Artifact creature. Whenever you cast a historic spell, you can pay one. If you do, create a token that's a copy of this guy. Oh, that could get out of hand fast. Mox Amber. Well, that's cool. They put a Mox in. Zero. Tap. Add one man of any color among legendary creatures and planeswalkers you control. Interesting. A moment in time made tangible. It has the power to realize epic visions. Eh. Flavor text crap. Navigator's Compass. One mana. When it enters the battlefield, you gain three life. Tap it. Until end of turn, target land you control becomes basic land type of your choice in addition to the other types. Nice. Mana fixing plus the ability to get a little extra bonus out of if you want. Pardic Wanderer. Six mana for a 5-5 five five Trampler. Look at that. It's got like one arm made of a gigantic stone slab. Uh, to the head of archaeological findings, the excavation schedule at dig site 9-3 beta must be revised. Part of the site has walked off. Hey, and look at that. That's kind of, that's a cute reference to the fucking when the card was, when, um, like, the History of Magic. 1993, it was beta was printed, right? All right, I like that. All right, and Power Stone Shard. Three mana to put out, tap it out of colors for each artifact you control named Power Stone Shard. So they get stronger the more you have out. That's cool. And Power Stones were a big deal. That's what the Thran used back in the day. Shield of the Realm, that looks fantastic. Two mana... If a source would deal damage to equip creature, prevent two of that damage. Interesting. All right. Banalish glaze plate is stained with salts from the rift area, enchanted to deflect blows. Cool. Short sword. Look at the stained glass behind it. I love it. Equip creature gets plus one, plus one. Okay. No big deal at all. Skittering surveyor. Three casting costs. When it enters the battlefield, you can search for your land, your deck for a basic land card. Reveal it. Put it into your hand. All right. Sorcerer's wand. One mana. Equip creature as this creature deals one damage to a creature or player. Or Planeswalker. Oh, target player or Planeswalker. If it's a wizard, it deals two damage to that player or Planeswalker instead. Oh, like a prodigal sorcerer, almost. Sparring Construct. 1-1. One, one. When it dies, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Uh, why? I don't understand. If it dies, how does it make your guy bigger? Whatever. Thran Temporal Gateway. Four to put out, four on tap. You may put a historic permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. Ugh. The portal opened not to the past, but from it, those who step through discover an unimaginable future. Those sagas that get pulled through, we pulled the Brothers' War through the time portal. We pulled the history of Benalia through the temporal gateway. What? It doesn't even make sense. Fuck you. The fucking flavor behind this card's retarded. Oh, Traxo, Scourge of Krug. I don't like this card. 
Four mana, seven, seven, trample. When it enters the battlefield, tap and doesn't untap during your untap step. Whenever you cast a historic spell, if I, the Brothers War happened, I untap. It's just stupid. I don't like this fucking card. And the artwork is garbage. Urza's Tome. Two mana, three untap, draw a card, then discard a card unless you exile a historic card from your graveyard. All right, that's interesting. Voltaic Servant. Two for a one, three at the beginning of your end step. Untap target artifact. All right. The Weatherlight. Four mana. For a 4-5 flying vehicle, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, look at the top five cards of your library. You reveal a historic card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. I like this. I've heard people complaining about the weatherlight, but I like this. I like this as a ship that goes around collecting up parts of history and things. I enjoy that. <coughs> to Fairy Sentinel. <coughs> it's five. <coughs> I'm dying here. Hold on. To Fairy Sentinel. Five casting cost. Artifact Golem, 2-6. As long as you control a Teferi Planeswalker, it becomes a 6-6. Six, six. Alright, so that's from the uh, that's obviously from the Teferi deck as well. And let's take a look at the lands, guys. We'll wrap it up with the lands. So we've got Cabal Stronghold, which is a play on Cabal Coffers. It taps for a colorless or three and tap it out of black for each basic swamp you control. And you got Clifftop Retreats, which is uh, comes into play tapped unless you have a mountain or plains and adds a red or green. Basically, they reprinted the Innistrad block duel. So you got Clifftop Retreat, Hinterland Harbor, Isolated Chapel, Sulphur Falls, and what was the other one? Woodland Cemetery. All right? And then the other lands they made, Memorial to Fall, he enters the battlefield tapped. Taps for a black, three, sacrifice it, return creature card from your graveyard to your hand. All right? The blue one sacrifices to draw two cards for five. The white one sacrifices for four to make two 1-1 one, one soldier tokens. The green one sacrifices for three to look at the top five of your deck, reveal a creature card from among them, and put it into your hand. The red one is sacrifice it to destroy target land. Huh. Well now. That one. That one. Keep your eyes on that one. Zalfirin Void. When it enters the battlefield, scry one, add one. This is cool. This is a land that taps for colorless. Scries one. The Zalfirin Void. I like this as an idea. That's fun. The wind whispers come home, but I cannot to fairy. Man, the flavor text, the artwork, everything comes together on this to give that feeling of like emptiness. And he just he can't go back. That's so cool. And then we just have the basics, it looks like. And then the meandering river. So they have the cycle of Is there a cycle? Oh no, this must be um this must be from the Teferi deck. Yeah, you look at the collector number, 274 out of 279. And this is 279. So these Timber Gorge and Meandering Rivers only show up in the Planeswalker decks. All right, well, goddamn, man, that's that's the entirety of Dominaria. We've gone through all the different colors. Now, if you've watched all the videos and everything, let me know what you guys think of the set. Overall, I know I got worked up at certain points and ranted a bit, but hey, what are you going to do? Thanks for coming by. We'll see you later, my friends. Hello from Cyclosense Bathtub, a.k.a. T Tub Talks. Together, we are the sixth color of magic.